Most media outlets reported on Anne McGuire's death, the first and only time a teacher had been killed during class in England, but withheld the identity of the killer due to his age, citing legal restrictions. But tabloid newspaper The Sun named Will as the alleged killer within days because it was technically legal since he had yet to appear in juvenile court. In preparation for his trial, Will had three assessments with an adolescent clinical psychologist, an adolescent forensic psychiatrist, and an expert psychiatric consultant. Will told one that he had made his decision to carry out the murder only four days prior to the crime having previously decided on suicide. He said, quote, After months of thinking life is pretty fucking shit, I couldn't see myself passing college and had no hope of doing anything. I tried to apply for the army, but they said no. He referred to Anne McGuire as, quote, barely human. He said he had decided on the previous Thursday and had settled on his weapon over the weekend. Will had considered beating her or possibly pushing her out of a window before deciding to use a knife. The same weekend of his grandmother's birthday celebration, that Will's father recalled to be, quote, unremarkable and an exceptionally ordinary weekend with Will behaving exactly as I would expect him to behave. Regarding the aftermath, Will said, quote, I knew what I was going to do. It was what I did. I said I was going to do other stuff, but I never got the chance other murders. It was a triple homicide. What I have done, I couldn't give a shit. I wasn't in shock. I was happy. I wasn't in shock. I had a sense of pride. I still do. I know it's uncivilized, but I know it's incredibly instinctual and human. Past generations of life, killing is a root of survival. It's kill or be killed. I did not have a choice. It was kill her or suicide. When one doctor asked how he felt about the impact of his actions on his victim's family, and the community as a whole, he said, quote, I couldn't give a shit. I know the victim's family will be upset, but I honestly don't care. In my eyes, everything I've done is fine and dandy. Another doctor noted that Will had, quote, a gross lack of empathy for his victim and a degree of callousness rarely seen in clinical practice. He found, quote, an intermediate and unpredictable risk to society should he somehow see freedom. The final conclusions were that Will showed signs of an adjustment disorder, along with evidence of a personality disorder with psychopathic traits. The general consensus between the experts was that his freedom posed a risk to those around him, and they could not be sure he wouldn't kill again. Will pleaded guilty and was headed straight for sentencing. There would be no trial, no opportunity for Will to take the stand and be forced to answer questions about why this tragedy had taken place, and no opportunity to question him about why one of them had to die. It was only at sentencing that the Maguire family heard the details of the day that fractured their hearts. According to Mr. Maguire, all communication shut down following that phone call beckoning him to the hospital. Even after he saw his wife lying dead, it took trickles of information from Mrs. McGuire's students to help the family understand the events that had taken place. The family said neither the police nor the school contacted them to explain how Anne died, or why, or even to offer their condolences for the loss of a pillar of that institution. Anne McGuire was described as perfect and dedicated, she was the kind of teacher that made sure kids had lunch in their stomachs when they forgot their money. Her loss resonated throughout the entirety of Leeds as 1,200 family members, friends, and generations of former students showed up to pay their final respects. The judge had plenty of scathing words for Will at his sentencing in November 2014. He noted his, quote, total and chilling lack of remorse and said the pride Will felt over his crime and the remarks he had made in the past were, quote, truly grotesque. He gave no credence to the insinuation that Will's type 1 diagnosis played a role in his crime, though both his parents seemed to think otherwise. His father, an executive on the Leeds City Council, had stated that there had been a marked shift in his son's demeanor after he found out. Regarding his parents... The school, police, and courts all felt they had not seen this coming, 
even with the known animosity Will felt toward Mrs. McGuire. The judge went so far as to say he had, quote, considerable empathy for Will's parents and that they, quote, cannot be held responsible in any way for what he did. The courts called his parents responsible and caring, pointing out that even though they had divorced when Will was six and his father went on to have another son, they still provided a safe and loving home for their son and his older brother. The judge took Will's premeditation and planning into consideration, as well as the fact that he desired to commit this murder in public in front of innocent children and bystanders. Anne McGuire's suffering and the savage and cowardly level of violence Will displayed found him sentenced to 20 years to life. Anne McGuire's family felt shut out of this investigation even years after her murder, with her husband feeling as though the killer's family were handled more gently than the victims. He said, quote, It's hard to express the complete wall of silence that went up after Anne was killed and remains in place to this day. We've never had a full explanation of what happened that day and why, and in a school I thought had a reputation for being a well-run, efficient, and caring institution, although I now know this is not the case. How exactly did this happen? What were the full circumstances in the school and of this boy in the period before Anne's death? Years on, we are still asking the same questions. Part of the tragedy is that knife crime and violent death are now top of the social agenda, yet when the authorities had a unique case study of something that went terribly wrong and from which lessons could be learned, they chose to go down a path of avoidance. Lead City Council, on which Will's father sat as head of civic and member support, could have initiated a serious case review into the details of Mrs. McGuire's murder in their town. Instead, however, the lead Safeguarding Children Board held a learning lessons review over the preceding two years. None of the students present that day were interviewed, but Will Cornick was giving his first non-court-related interview into the matter. Now he was saying that a red mist overtook him as he went to Spanish class, making him unconscious to his surroundings. He also claimed now that he had told so many individuals about his desires and plan in an effort to be stopped before killing Anne McGuire. The Learning Lessons Review concluded that Will's schoolmates, quote, viewed his comments as fantasy. It concluded by determining that, quote, no credible warning signs had been present prior to the event, referred to here as an unprecedented emergency situation. Mr. McGuire felt that the authorities had an agenda and it was to avoid all public scrutiny over the murder of a public servant at work. In January 2015, a three-judge panel at the Court of Appeals in London rejected Will's appeal of his 20 years to life sentence, calling it, quote, the right decision. An official coroner's inquest commenced in November 2017. Though a jury was approved for the proceedings, there would be no testimony from any of the students Will spoke to about his plans. The court had deemed them to be, quote, potentially vulnerable, though Mr. McGuire pointed out that it was in their community's best interest to learn about Will's demeanor and statements leading up to the crime. Instead, the coroner read aloud their initial police statements, recounting the events of that day and the months and years leading up to it. The jury heard from the detective superintendent, who said he had specifically instructed his officers at the scene not to question the students about why they didn't report the threats Will had made that morning, or the fact that he had a knife. The jury heard how Will had fantasized and obsessed over the death of his Spanish teacher, but also how his own family wasn't even safe from his vitriol. One friend said that Will would tell them he didn't care if his dad were to die in a car accident and that he wanted to murder his entire family. One student had said, quote, He showed me the knife. He like smiled and pulled out like a Jack Daniels bottle and said, It's like a party, party drink, and like laughed. 
Another said he had, quote, looked at the human body and how to kill people because he wanted to kill them fast. Fast because he had planned to kill three teachers and the unborn baby, and he knew he would need to be quick. Will had even written to friends on Facebook that, quote, As long as she's alive, I'll be depressed, sad, and angry, so there's only one thing to do. And, I'm not looking forward to tomorrow. We have Maguire and I want her to perish. Many involved made statements, including Will's parents. His mother attributed some of his increased hostility to his diabetes diagnosis, saying he began to distance himself once he learned of the condition and became highly intolerant of other people. His dad went on to say, quote, I do not believe Will's school let Will down. I cannot point to anything that could have forewarned anybody of what was to happen. There was simply nothing I could point to in Will's demeanor prior to that Monday, which helps me understand in any way what happened. He said he visited a then 19-year-old Will once a month, finding that he felt isolated and scared and, quote, struggled to express his emotions. He's told me that he very much regrets and is desperate to find a route to get better. The result of the coroner's inquest was the verdict of unlawful killing. The jury noted that a contributing factor to Anne McGuire's murder was the reluctance of classmates to report what they'd heard. The police and the courts felt like making them testify would be re-traumatizing to them and that only Will Cornick was responsible for this murder. Ann McGuire's murder remains the only instance of a teacher being killed during class in England. Ironically, though, another teacher killer was cleared for release from prison just days after Ann was killed. Back in December 1995, 15-year-old Lierko Chindamo stabbed a teacher outside a school he didn't attend. The English teen was of Italian and Filipino descent, and he headed up a gang who tried to model themselves after the Chinese triads. Lierko Chindamo had brought 10 to 15 gang members with him to St. George's Comprehensive School in northwest London to attack a student. Headmaster Philip Lawrence, a 48-year-old father of four, was killed by a stab wound to the chest. Chindamo was found guilty of murder and released for the first time in 2011, but was quickly jailed again for attempted robbery. Just days after Mrs. McGuire's murder, Lierko Chindamo was released after completing his sentence. Knife crime continues to hit record highs in England. As always, thanks for listening. Stay tuned for a preview from my friends at Dumb and Busted, and stay safe out there. And now more than ever, don't be scared. What podcast brings you true stories of exceptionally smart and insanely dumb crimes every week? Dumb and Busted, obviously. But Hannah, where is your one-stop shop if you want to hear about a killer nurse, a pervy arsonist, or a group of hella old dudes breaking into a vault? Dumb and Busted, Allison, come on, seriously? We host the show together. Okay, last question. Where can I go if I need to hear the number one song of 1999, I Want It That Way? What? The Backstreet Boys album Millennium? How did we even get on this tangent? Oh, okay. Sorry for being the only one who's ever fallen victim to their tight harmonies and timeless songs. Anyway, please listen and subscribe to Dumb and Busted on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Play, or anywhere you get your podcasts. Crime you later!